In my adolescent mind, there is one movie motorcycle that stands above the rest. That's the death trap of a mini bike from Dumb and Dumber. For years now, Zach and I have talked about wanting to recreate Lloyd and Harry's ridiculous ride up to Aspen. But we agreed, in order for our road trip experiment to be as scientific as possible, we need it to be on an exact replica of the mini bike from the movie. Problem is, that little motorcycle sold on eBay a few years ago for 50,000 bucks. So that left us with just one option. We gotta build one ourselves. This is how we built the mini bike from Dumb and Dumber. Let's open up the shop manual. We've got two objectives here. First, build a mini bike that resembles the original as closely as possible. Second, build a mini bike that's actually capable of hauling nearly 400 pounds of man meat plus a Samsonite briefcase from the plains of Nebraska up to a little place called Aspen. For as bizarre and wacky as Lloyd and Harry's mini bike looks, it appears to have been built off of a kit that's been manufactured by the same company since the 1960s. We've got one of those frame kits with the same silly five inch wheels. We've got a 212 cc pull start engine. We've even got a basket, tassels, and a raccoon tail. So I'm pretty confident Zach and I are gonna be able to build a very accurate replica. First, we lengthened the child size mini bike chassis to theoretically fit two full grown men. That meant taking our brand new frame and cutting it in half. Then we slid on sections of chromoly tubing to stretch the wheelbase to the appropriate length. We were pretty sure our frame matched the dimensions of the movie bike perfectly. What we weren't so sure about was how well we were actually going to fit. I'm trying to envision doing this for four days straight. What <laughs> this seat's gonna feel like. But I don't know. Seems to work. I'm gonna have a sissy bar to lean against. Yeah. I'm not gonna have any gloves. This is gonna be our most intimate CTXP yet. Indeed. Our intimacy was assured once the dry fit pieces were welded in place. As I worked on the frame, Zach sorted out the details of a key upgrade for the engine. We got the torque converter install. I just watched a YouTube video. It's very paint by number. Um, but this is sort of what the guts of a scooter engine look like. Basically, it's a um, uh, torque converter that allows there to be higher gearing when we're going fast. So hopefully that'll keep us going on the flat when we're out in uh, Nebraska and Plains, Colorado. And then it allows us to have good torque to get up the hills, which there are probably going to be many of. Frame is all welded up. We've got our little limousine of a mini bike here. Now we got to figure out if the engine is going to fit. Um, some information says that we need to like raise the engine or angle it. Uh, so we're going to see if that's the case now. Sure enough, there wasn't enough room. With the CVT installed, the engine sat higher in the frame, and the gas cap wouldn't clear the frame rail. The most folks run like these little cylindrical auxiliary cans somewhere else for the gasoline because the the Predator 212 engine doesn't fit. But we very very much want to maintain the aesthetic of the original bike, so. Plus we need range. Yeah, we do need range. It's 70 miles per gallon, right? The Hogs square red and yellow engine mounted tank is a defining characteristic of the movie bike, and we were committed to maintaining it. So we cut the engine platform and made a bracket to secure a slightly smaller square tank in its proper place. With that sorted out, we slapped wheels in the hog so we had a rolling chassis. Next up, some advanced electronics. By the rule of law in the photo we're going off of, this is uh, just a, a bicycle headlight generator. <laughs> so the wheel turns and it turns this little thingy and it creates electricity and that turns the headlight on. You wanna turn your headlight off, just rock it back. Off you go. <laughs> we're gonna have a better headlight than this, don't worry. Our better headlight was actually an LED fog lamp for a truck. It was the right size and plenty bright, but supplying it and the taillight with power meant installing charging coils under the flywheel and assembling a custom wiring harness and battery pack, all of which needed to tuck neatly under the seat so it was out of sight. All the puzzle pieces for our weird little mini bike were falling into place, which meant it was finally time to revisit the engine. Doesn't look like much now because we've torn the tank and a bunch of other stuff off of it to make the engine fit in the frame, but this is a Predator 212cc engine. The one the guys use in the movie was probably like 125cc Tecumseh that makes about three and a half horsepower, but we're actually trying to ride up the eastern slope of the Rocky Mountains, so we need more oomph. I'm gonna tear into it and rebuild it. 
The plan was to apply a standard hot rodding recipe of increased compression by way of a flat top piston and machining down the cylinder head. We also cleaned up the casting slag on the intake exhaust ports, rejetted the carburetor, and then reassembled everything while paying special attention to torque specs and tolerances. Progress report, we did get the engine in the chassis. We got the tank on. It is a super tight fit. Uh, seat is also on, so it's coming together. The tank is so ready, in fact, that it will receive gasoline and hopefully fire this thing up. So um, we can take it down and put some gas in it and see if our effort has been worthwhile. Oh my God, it's so heavy, so sturdy. Yes, step one. It's kind of exciting. That's probably like 15 minutes worth of gas. Is there a, uh, oh, why is it leaking gas? I forgot the. Wasn't that the thing I was like, I hope it doesn't do that? <laughs> yep. Is it literally leaking from the filter? Yep. That's lame. This is the equivalent of our pet's head's falling. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when you pull parts from the bottom of your spares box, you get a dud. With gas running into the carburetor instead of onto the shop floor, we gave it another go. We've got combustion, it is very loud and quite shaky, uh, but yeah, that's a good start. It's, it's something we need to have happen if we're going to ride this thing. Loud, shaky, and dumb. So we got all three things we need, really. The hog was a runner, and of course we were eager to see what it was like to ride. It starts, it runs, it carries two people around. It feels like it's actually got pretty substantial power, so high hopes for having it haul us up to the Rocky Mountains. It was faster than we thought and shakier than we could have ever imagined. I like the bell, I like the bell. <laughs> Test ride complete. All our movie replica mini bike needed was paint and a few finishing touches. This is what Zach and I were aiming to build, and I think we did a pretty good job, but I'll let you folks be the judge. Behold, our Dumb and Dumber replica. <laughs> Building this little bike was a lot of fun, and if you want to make your own mini bike, turns out there are a lot of kits available on the internet. And Zach and I did not just build this little rig for fun. We are actually going to ride it together all the way up to Aspen in an attempt to replicate the ride from the movie Dumb and Dumber. By the time you watch this, we should have already tried it, so I don't know how it turns out, but you can find out by watching that episode of CTXP.